Tomorrow in Michigan, former President Trump will have his first rally since the assassination attempt against him. It's also going to be the first rally with Ohio Senator J.D. Vance since naming him as his running mate. Last night, Trump formally accepted the Republican presidential nomination in the longest speech in the history of the Republican National Convention. He addressed the assassination attempt, among other things. I heard a loud whizzing sound and felt something hit me really, really hard on my right ear. If I had not moved my head at that very last instant, the assassin's bullet would have perfectly hit its mark. I'm not supposed to be here tonight. Not supposed to be here. Joining us now from Milwaukee, NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard, also with us, MSNBC political analyst Brendan Buck, former press secretary for House Speakers Boehner and Ryan. So, Von, former president started his speech with a call for unity, but it certainly didn't end that way, and there was a whole lot of time between the beginning and the end. Let's just put it this way, Jose. It was quite lengthy, and so it's kind of hard to condense it all into a defined few seconds here. But I think that if you can look at this as two parts, number one, you have the moment where he described the uh, last Saturday afternoon and the near-death assassination attempt on his life and surviving that. And he gave tribute to Corey Compator, who he paid tribute to with his fire gear that he had up on stage. And during that moment, when he kissed the, uh, uh, kissed the helmet of the man that was killed at the rally, he went and gave that moment to great applause in the arena. And there were tears throughout the arena on many of the delegates' uh, faces. And I, I think when you look at that moment and you heard Donald Trump suggest that Americans should unify and come together, it was a more subdued... Donald Trump in tenor, there was not as explicit of attacks on President Biden. When I say that there's two parts to it, though, there was the other extended part of Donald Trump's convention primetime remarks. And that was not a departure from who Donald Trump has been for the last nine years. And that was him calling for the charges, the criminal charges for him to be tossed, him referring to a cheating in elections, him praising the likes of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. This for Donald Trump was also suggesting that there would be mass deportations, stricter immigration enforcement. And so there was little in the form of, I think, moderating the MAGA agenda that he has pushed, but instead for Donald Trump, a, a suggestion that there should be a stand down of the attacks that he is perceived to have taken place politically against him. Of course, uh, for Donald Trump, the, the country bared witness to just four days before this convention speech, his life nearly being taken from him. And clearly the tenor of which Donald Trump just over three months out was not one of uh, uh, calling for you know, re retribution or revenge like we have heard for uh, the last two years, but one that was more uh, uh, focused at least on the policies that he has long touted that he would try to implement come 2025, Jose. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brennan, this was one long speech. Uh, you know, it, it, it came after days of a, of a tightly scripted RNC, and it seems as though Trump started with a tightly written speech, but then went off on a lot of tangents. How do you see that speech having an impact? And, and how do you see the assassination attempt at all uh, changing Trump or his campaign? Yeah, I mean, big picture, this was unquestionably a successful convention. I mean, Republicans were enthusiastic. Uh, they were all on the same page. They avoided the issues that, that don't work well for them. And they focused on the issues that do play well. Now, Trump's speech last night was not a, a game-changing speech, but frankly, he didn't need a game-changing speech. And it was probably uh, more successful and notable for what it wasn't. It wasn't as angry as it can be. It wasn't as scary as it can be. It wasn't as dark as it sometimes is. And there's a lot of people who are probably looking at this party right now saying, okay, there's a lot of enthusiasm. Is it okay now to go along with Donald Trump? And I think what they were trying to do all week was one, give permission to say, it is okay. This is not a scary person. Um, and at the same time, obviously projecting strength. Now, 
It was a very long speech, uh, and if you stuck into the very end, you're probably a diehard Trump voter anyway. The, that first 30 minutes, the most compelling part, retelling of that story, um, I do think helps them. I think it, it makes him a more human figure, and that's probably the part that most people were actually wa uh, watching. So they come out of here on a complete glide path unless something dramatic changes, and we know that it could potentially something dramatic changing. Um, but right now, they have to be very happy with how this week went. And Vaughn, we're just learning that uh, Donald Trump is going to speak with Ukrainian President Zelensky today. Right. NBC News has now learned that today Donald Trump will be speaking with Ukrainian President Zelensky. This is notable for obvious two reasons. Number one, it was four years ago, four, five years ago, I should say, that Donald Trump had that infamous phone call with the Ukrainian president in which he implied that U.S. support to Ukraine could be held up if uh, Zelensky did not agree to have his administration investigate the Biden family. And, of course, that led to Donald Trump's impeachment in the U.S. House. And I think the second part of the obvious uh, implications of this is the fact that Donald Trump could very well win the presidency in November and take over the White House in Jan on January 20th. And there is no indication at this time that Russia's military operation will cease in Ukraine. And Donald Trump has openly questioned whether financial aid should continue to go to Ukraine. J.D. Vance has explicitly suggested that he does not care what happens to Ukraine and that financial aid should cease to the country from the United States. And, of course, Donald Trump has uh, become a close ally of Viktor Orban, who really has been uh, a, a key a critic of expanding NATO and uh, continuing for the EU to, to provide uh, assistance to uh, uh, Ukraine financially. So there is a lot on the line for uh, Zelensky and Ukraine understanding if a Trump second, a second Trump administration were to come into power. And so clearly these two individuals, these two men, uh, are, are jumping on the phone here with still three months until the general election, understanding the major implications that Trump presidency could bring to the region. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.